the prophetic words over the years have uh, just come to pass exactly as has been. I think Joanne's going to maybe explain just a little bit of that. And after Pastor Joanne speaks, I will speak for a few minutes. Praise God. We arrived last night from Korea um, <laughs> by grace of God. Uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> we actually came to the building. Uh, Ryan's like from the airport, right, as soon as we got off, he's like, let's go to the building. And uh, I was like, oh. And we went, came here and we got to see this beautiful place. We we're so grateful. I mean, uh, we're in awe of God. It'll be a miracle for me to not cry at some point. <laughs> uh, cry a lot. Uh, sharing about what God um, has been what he has done and what he has spoken to us. This is just the beginning of our church's destiny and journey. Uh, it started 19 years ago in our living room uh, with maybe eight people, and four of them was our family. And uh, with um, great uh, passion and visions from the Lord. We believe that God will touch the nations through this ministry uh, from the beginning. <clears throat> and 19 years later, almost uh, 20th year, we're here. Um, and we just, uh, more than anything, uh, what I've been really sensing was that we've experienced so many miracles of God. We have experienced extraordinary signs and wonders and Bible stories uh, in, a, in a way that is kind of hidden and in our uh, like amazing uh, moments with the Lord. But coming into this building makes, uh, it, it uh, makes me feel like what we wanted to share like a kind of scream out, express from our hearts to the world that God is so good. He's good father. He's so awesome. He's so loving and so kind and so close. Those testimony, now the Lord um, um, enabled us to uh, uh, testify with the physical evidence of this miracle of this building, uh, the way it came to pass. Uh, if you maybe listen to some of the previous uh, Sunday messages, you can hear it was the miracles of God. And with uh, such a generous uh, sacrificial offering of the people, I am so grateful. And um, our heart's goal in our ministry was to um, that <clears throat> that we would be able to love God. That was our number one goal. Um, that before His eyes, that we would um, that He would be able, He would say to us, "You love me." You know, that was our passion, and we didn't want to ever uh, move away from that. You know, uh, and we wanted to stand for what is was in the Bible and fullness and all that is in the Bible, not just uh, parts that we can understand. We wanted to see, uh, we, and then secondly, we wanted uh, to bring some kind of impact to the world to prepare the second coming of Christ. And um, <clears throat> And uh, please excuse my voice. We in Korea, and every day we had to uh, either cry out or sing out or, <laughs> or preach. Really, it was a very grueling. Uh, I mean, it was a full schedule. But um, but Ryan asked me <laughs> last night, "Can you uh, share first? And so. I tried to wait on the Lord after, you know, doing everything and around 2 a.m. and I fell asleep. <laughs> I woke up at 4.44 and I felt like, oh, I think God's giving me a message. And I put it down and it's basically, uh, it's like a scribing of what he had said uh, in the past years through dreams and visions. We honor uh, the voice of the Lord as uh, we honor the word of God, but we re we're really uh, strong in uh, being a prophetic church, not just because we want to be like, oh, ooh, 
like you know spiritual, but we want to uh, walk in uh, closeness with the Lord. You know, to, we want to hear the voice of God. We want to uh, follow the voice of God. So, I for some reason the Lord gave me grace to be able to remember a lot, a lot of dreams. Even the, a lot of times when I say, "Oh, you had that dream like five years ago," and she's like, and the people are like, well, "I did." It. And I, I tend to remember dreams and visions from the Lord, and I just put them together like a scribe and just to share this is what he I believe that God is saying that he will do in this new in this place and um, and uh, I love confirmations and this morning uh, Silla this um, lady came up to me and said last time when you shared about the time 1122 when the Lord told you to wait at 1122 and healed you I felt like looking up the meaning of 1122 and it means scriber scribe you're a scribe and a scribe 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 I was like yay so here it is <laughs> So 444, and I know to me it means uh, open doors. And also, you know, the, the Bible describes the world, the four corners. And uh, that's why in the scientists in the back in the days used to believe that the globe was square. <laughs> but anyway, so the four represents the, the whole world. And to me, uh, Right away, I thought about, I know that this is going to be a place, a sending place um, for, to the four corners of the world. To the, to, to, um, and it's a number of also commissioning. And so I thought about how before we even started the church uh, with an angelic visitation, and the angel came and uh, first, first, it was like a, a dream trance kind of experience and I was standing in front of a, a, our new building. Uh, so, and then Angel put this hat of Aladdin, you know Aladdin's hat <laughs> over me and another girl who's Korean. Um, so, and said, blessed are you, O my woman for you be conceived by the Holy Spirit. The angel spoke to Mary, um, that uh, word, and so, and so, you know, that was the only time I had an angel's visit and say that, so I was like, what does that mean? I'm gonna be pregnant and give birth to a prophet or something? But, you know, nine months later, our church started. So then I began to think about Okay, I think over the years, I was like, when the Lord gives us a building, I think he's gonna send me out to the Muslim world, Islam nations. And then I was like, oh, but I don't wanna be sent out. <laughs> so it really always made me feel perplexed when I think about that, uh, that uh, experience. And, um, and then, Interestingly, even around the time we received the building, uh, when we found it, and <laughs> even we arrived yesterday, we were <laughs> kind of away, and it kind of seemed like um, we were. I was not really like part, but you know, not that I was not part of it, but it's like a, we were. Keep, I was keep being sent out, and so I was really concerned about it. And I was praying. And then this understanding came that, well, it's not, it was the whole prophetic experience. I believe that our building, as the Lord releases this place, we're going to be a place that sends people out. It's my, automatically, my hand always goes to find or kill the bug when I see, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. I came from Korea, there are so many mosquitoes, I was like killing it. <laughs> sorry. So I believe the Lord, when I woke up at 444, and I sensed that, and I thought about that uh, visitation of angel and sending out. And there are other dreams. I don't want to mention everything. That basically um, was a message that this church, uh, as we receive a physical building, that we will be sent out. To, uh, first of all, 
uh, have, uh, there is going to be many open doors. We have already experienced in Korea in a supernatural uh, divine doors to Islamic nations and Israel. It's going to be a very important um, beginning of uh, going into those nations and, and um, for revival to come. Uh, I mean, the revival is going on there, but you know, whatever we need to bring, uh, partly. Uh, for that, I believe that the Lord is going to open doors to that. And also the message of being sent out to the world. Um, I think it was Eunice who had a dream where um, our church congregation, we came to our new building, but our congregation was facing not to the stage, but out, outward, outside. So I was like, oh, what's wrong with our congregation? <laughs> At first I was thinking that, but then more I prayed about it, I just felt like the Lord was saying, you're gonna, um, what will you receive here? That you're gonna be sent out, you're gonna be focused outward, outside of these four walls of our building. And that has been our heart and desire as we pray and cry it out that the Lord was putting it in our hearts that uh, as we, whatever it may be, it could be homes or right, you know, job, place, or the city that you live in, or whatever assignment that Holy Spirit puts in our hearts, that it will be, our mindset will be focused on bringing the kingdom wherever we go. And so, um, um, yeah, and also uh, Sam had a dream where we came to our building and then, uh, we were so busy doing the kingdom work outside. We had everything minimal inside the building. And so through uh, all those uh, dreams and visions, I believe that the Lord is saying, uh, this is be a place, like an Antioch church, a standing place. I believe many missionaries will be sent out. And people will be going, uh, going to the nations. People from the nations will be coming here and um, will be uh, uh, focused on transforming the cities and the places that we, we go. Um, because of the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, <clears throat> and um, and also, uh, this place will be a place of uh, obviously revival. We call for revival, miracle, and healing. Um, God, who makes impossible possible, will be experienced here. Uh, this year, um, we had, Ryan uh, had everyone write down uh, impossible possible list, where we write down our impossible situations, where we're believing that God will make it possible. And both of us put down, uh, guess what, what it was? <laughs> yes, building. <laughs> And, uh, and then uh, there was no physical means, uh, actually, when we just see the physical, uh, what we, where we were and what we had. But <clears throat> we put it down. And uh, many things, literally, uh, the Lord did the miracle. And uh, with suddenly, of God came and he uh, made it possible. And um, I believe that this place will be um, just the way that we came in. I think it will not just be a one event, but it will be something that we will experience continually. Miracles of God. Um, Ryan and I, when we got married, uh, the church uh, was having revival meetings, so had a banner that said revival on the, uh, the stage. And uh, for a wedding, they take it down. But they forgot to take it down for our wedding, so all our photo has revival on the back. <laughs> we found out later after being called to, you know, with the calling of revival, we were like, oh, look at this. 
And then next to the word revival in English and Korean, Buhum, and it says miracle land, miracle ministry. And I've always pondered, I wonder if that's a prophetic word. And I believe <laughs> with all my heart that miracle land <laughs> Uh, a miracle ministry, and um, I believe um, you know revival is about in the place of barrenness and death, God's breakthrough come, and death comes life. Uh, you know, and so I believe uh, that that's what we've been contending for. We have seen glimpses of it. We've seen amazing miracles of God. But I believe in this place we'll experience explosion of miracles of God and miracle ministries for uh, revival. Amen. Amen. Um, so personally with our congregation, but also um, you know, uh, in our um, even though we are sent out to the different nations, I believe that there will be increase of that. Um, also, um, angels are being gathered here for miracle. Um, to, for, we're going to see the continually impossible becoming possible by the glory of God. Um, and I, I don't. This I don't think this is a season of. I mean, I don't think it's a mir necessarily has to do with miracle. But I kept hearing a season of marriages, and um, yeah. <laughs> and family restoration. About a couple of months ago, before we. Uh, we even found this building. The Lord, I was praying one night and this prayer just came. God, I pray that our building will not look like, like you know, those uh, office buildings, like square. But I want but I pray that it will look like a, more like a house. <laughs> and then when we came here, oh, uh, I was like, oh, that's the prayer that he put in my mouth to pray for me to know that it's important. And I think it has to do with the family restorations. Over the years, something that God has really instilled in our hearts and trained us, uh, even when we didn't even believe for it, my personally I was opposed to it was uh, ministry of uh, deliverance and breaking generational curses. And um, but I believe that um, there is a um, when we you know God has already made this free access to the fullness of His presence and His Spirit. But then if he made the way, then uh, we, and as we enter in, when there's resistance, that resistance is not from God, right? So it's, uh, it's a limitation of our mindset affected by the, uh, the spiritual world, uh, demons, and uh, different uh, things that happen in the generations. And it is crucial for the glorious church to rise in the glory of God beginning to move like Joel's army that we see in the Bible, uh, we need to take care of this resistance and uh, it will take deliverances, inner healing and breaking generational curses. And when we break, we've watched how when we deal with the breaking generational curses, literally the whole family experiences the salvation or freedom or coming to know the Holy Spirit. And I believe uh, he has trained us so much in that, emphasizing so much about that in the past years. And I believe that we're going to see the families being restored. And um, yeah, so season of marriage. Uh, marriage has to do with, uh, it has to do with the prophetic destiny being released. And so uh, now as we are entering into, we have entered into this time of promises of God being fulfilled. Uh, we've received promises well, again and again and again and again for over decades and now it's been being fulfilled one after another and this has to do with um, also destiny of marriages and season of marriage. Um, 
And uh, this place also will, be, will have this magnetic pull to Jesus. Um, I had a very important dream when I got married. Uh, of, it was a dream about revival. And uh, people were, everyone was, what was so shocking to me uh, was that everyone was mesmerized by Jesus. By be everyone was lost in the beauty of Jesus and just wanting more and more and more to this intoxicating fragrance of the beauty of Jesus. Um, and it was like a magnetic pull. And uh, so I've been contending and believing I will run uh, with all my heart until I see this, what I've seen in the dream come to pass in reality. Um, and we have moment, we had different seasons and moments of the deep intimacy, but it was like a divine outpouring of the intimacy, oil of intimacy, where everyone was being pulled and, and just wanting more of Jesus than anything else. And so, uh, and uh, as you guys know, um, many pastors now have Tesla and, uh, <laughs> and I want to kind of share that it is a kind of like a prophetic message because when the Tesla came out, when it was really expensive, the Lord told me, you're going to have, have a Tesla. And uh, my son was next to me. And so I obviously thought Sam is going to have it because, you know, he, he has good salary and he can probably afford it. And he probably, so I was like, the Lord is telling me to, that you're going to get a Tesla. And he's like, oh, I don't like Tesla. But I was like, the Lord says. <laughs> I was pressuring him. No, I was like, you know, I really heard it clearly, so I think you're going to have that. And then, um, but uh, after like a year or two, he uh, really, he likes this Mustang electric car, and uh, Pastor Jenny gave a word to him, you're going to have a really good favor with some kind of car that you like, and you're going to get it, and that exactly happened. So uh, he got that Mustang, and I was like, you know, I, I don't know what happened, but I, don't have, I hope you are not disobeying the Lord. And then, I, uh, Ryan knows I almost, you know, I was like really convincing. Are you sure, uh, you know, that's the Lord? And when, uh, anyway, so, and uh, recently, you know, how they did all that amazing <laughs> discounts and whatnot. And so I was sick and I was falling asleep and Ryan's like, oh, we, sh we should get a Tesla and we ex make an exchange. It's almost the same amount. And then I think I said something like, oh, I like red color. But I thought I was dreaming. When I woke up, we had a red Tesla. And I was like, that was, <laughs> that was so interesting. And then because, you know, Ryan likes to share everything that is, you know, good, amazing things. And so he shared with all the pastors and many pastors got it. And then it dawned on me, the Lord was speaking to me. <laughs> he wanted to give Tesla. And I was like, oh. And then I remembered, uh, I've been seeing this, you know, the, mar the, the logo. So I looked it up, it means, um, uh, it's a measurement for magnet. And so um, I was like, what does this mean? And we were uh, outside somewhere in this building uh, one day, and Leo was there. And I looked, and uh, across the sh from here, in another uh, Aberson area, there was a Tesla uh, fuel station. Was charging station. So I looked at it and I was thinking, oh, it's right across the street. How nice. And I was like, God, what does it mean uh, that, that, is, that we are getting this? And are you trying to speak to me through the logo? In that moment, Leo says, this place will be like a magnetic pool. And I knew that that was the answer from the Lord. Uh, uh, it's a, a Tesla is a measure 
ring uh, measurement for a magnet. And so uh, I just felt like, okay, this is a uh, prophetic message. When the Lord gives it like that, you know, it's an important message. I wish it was all, you know, all the time, angel visiting, like to Mary, but sometimes <laughs> comes it like this, and I want to sh proclaim that, that it will be, there will be a magnetic pull to the atmosphere of heaven, to Jesus in this place, that people will be mesmerized uh, to the Lord, pulled to God. Uh, when God pulls with his magnet, magnetic power, it's pretty powerful. And they will be lovesick. And uh, uh, that's the greatest uh, uh, gift from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, Another important uh, one that we have been uh, sharing in different ways, a um, number of times. But again, I want to share with this dream I had that uh, we will experience financial miracles of God, testimonies of God that will go um, around the nations. Even this time when we went to Korea, Ryan shared about how, you know, we came into this building and different ministries came to Ryan and said, can you please share that testimony, that testimony. Um, and then uh, he did and, uh, but I was thinking about, anyway, the dream was that I was watching this Toronto movement and they, I don't know in real life, I didn't research for your ass, I don't know what happened in real life, but in Toronto movement, they knew that this move of God was coming, and so they were preparing the media so they could air it out, that it could go viral to the whole world. And then uh, that's exactly what happened. In my dream, I'm watching this, <coughs> and then suddenly, it was blessed. And then we were coming up to give financial testimonies of a financial miracle. And there's so many testimonies. And this one person particularly, uh, she was coming up, falling over because of the holy laughter and joy of the Lord. She couldn't contain herself to be still. And she came up and she was like laughing like crazy. and. So the whole place was like, you know, bursting with laughter and joy. And she goes, I am blessed financially so much, it's impossible for me to be blessed more. I was like, what is, what is that like, right? No wonder she's going crazy and like falling over. And so when she said that, that testimony went viral to the whole world. And so... I'm sharing this, not saying, you know, because we are going to have a financial miracle, you should come to our church, no. <laughs> um, but I be, I, uh, uh, we have been receiving the promise of the Joseph's anointing, and you know, it is about salvation coming to the lost, right? It's a whole uh, nation being saved through Joseph. But in this end time, because we are called with a specific calling, um, to prepare end time ministry, to prepare the way of the Lord's return. Um, and I was thinking uh, about how, this is just now my thought, but the Holy Spirit moved in a way that people will open their hearts to receive the gospel. Holy Spirit's anointing came if you think about it, in the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit was poured out, different people speak in different languages, it says that all these nations, there was all this Jew spread around this, all these nations, I think it was named about 20, 25 different nations, gathered in that one place because of feast. And then Holy Spirit came and empowered supernaturally to speak the language of different people for them to see that this is God's, you know, and for them to open up and to hear the gospel. And um, 
and the Lord releases healing, he releases freedom. There's different anointing. The oil of God comes that brings enablement, supernatural grace for us to do a move in the supernatural power of God for the gospel, for the word of God to be confirmed, for people's heart to be opened, and then, you know, to preach the gospel. And I was thinking, maybe in the end time, because of so much famine, so much financial shaking, maybe the church moving in the financial miracle, well, maybe it will be a, one of the greatest tool to evangelize. And what the Lord has put it in my heart, even before we uh, met Pastor Jenny, was that uh, I will release the finance to the point where you will be able to influence the government with the uh, with the finance. So I'm not saying that uh, I, I I believe that it is invitation. We have to uh, walk, you know, walk the walk of his calling. We have to walk the walk of obedience. We have to partner with God to pray. But there is the invitation. And I believe that God is um, going to release these financial miracles uh, for the sake of uh, the entire revival and salvations. And lastly, I just want to mention about... Um, in, in Korea, when we were um, we were in Jeju, and there are like the storm is coming, and it's gonna, you know, touch Jeju, and uh, it was gonna go here, and it was we were in Jeju, and we had to fly out, and basically uh, there was a possibility that we couldn't fly out, but uh, the Lord was uh, telling me, I was brushing my teeth, and He's like, uh, the storm will not harm you. The storm will not harm you twice. So I was like, whoa, it's not gonna harm, what does that mean? And then, but anyway, the day when the storm was supposed to hit, um, all the flights got canceled except ours. And then after <laughs> ours, there was cancellation. So we are like, okay, we are flying out. So we flew out and the mist, uh, the, the plane went, dropped and sh shook. <laughs> there was a moment, it was like pretty scary. People were like, ah! screaming, you know, and then um, in that moment, Janet was, uh, she was singing, hide me now under your wings. She was, uh, she said the song was coming out, and then Pastor Josh was like, when we all get to heaven, <laughs> what a day of rejoicing that'll be. <laughs> he said, I don't know if he was joking, but he said he, that song came out. <laughs> Your eyes like, ah, I'm so scared. <laughs> And in that moment, I was like, oh, thank you, Lord. You said you will not be harmed in the storm. So I was like, it's going to be okay. I was like, we're going we're gonna to we're gonna land, fine. And then it just dawned on me. I, th I was like, who am I that God would tell me that? Why? You know, I just felt such a father's love. Father who cares, and that maybe he was uh, uh, concerned that I would go into panic attack or something because I, I usually you know full of, I, I could go there you know, so and I was thinking about uh, this. Um, I want to read this uh, a lyric and um, proclaim that this will be a place where we're gonna we're gonna know the Father's love. We're going to experience Father's love. Uh, about 10 years ago, this evangelist uh, prophesied in a big meeting that in between uh, LA County and San Diego County, he's not from here, so he doesn't know Orange County, I see this one place, and I see the explosion of Father's love, which is Orange County, <laughs> and we are taking by faith that we are going to experience Father's love. But there's this lyric, uh, you guys know this song pretty, uh, so you guys will probably know this, that says, Who am I that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name? Would care to feel my hurt? Who am I that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way? for my ever wandering heart. Not because of who I am, not because of what you've done, not because of 
uh, what I've done, but because who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today, gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, vapor in the wind. Still, you hear me when, I, when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling. And you've told me who I am, and I'm yours, I'm yours. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Because I am yours. And I believe that... Um, as we set our eyes on the Lord and all the blessings and pourings and miracles and the healings as we receive and as we run our race uh, to that great commission God has given us to preach the gospel and to teach uh, the people groups uh, to make disciples, to follow the commands of Jesus. As we set our goal to that, I believe all these promises are uh, going to flow in our lives powerfully. Amen. 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 Uh, <clears throat> I, I know uh, my son, you guys know my son, and we've honored him many times for doing hard work, but I just want to honor my daughter. You know, she lives in LA, but she's here with us. Lauren, can you stand up for one second? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, pastors' children go through a lot. Uh, and for 19 years, my daughter has been so amazing uh, to me. And uh, I love her so much. Thank you for all of your love and support. And uh, same, same to my son. Ditto for my son. <laughs> Usually, men talk like that, right? Like, okay, yes. Amen. <laughs> um, I want to just go over one passage for about five minutes, and then we have a ba baby dedication, and we'll get to lunch. Um, Second Chronicles 7, 1 through 4, you guys know this passage. Well, this is when Solomon dedicated the temple. When Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven, consumed the burnt offering and sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the place. The priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled the Lord's house. All the sons of Israel, seeing the fire come down, glory of the Lord upon the house, bowed down on the pavement with their faces to the ground, and they worshiped and gave praise to the Lord, saying, Truly he is good. Truly his loving kindness is everlasting. Okay, do we have the picture ready? Okay, just to show you that uh, we're not lying. This is our wedding picture. <laughs> you may ask, who are those people? Uh, Joanne usually says that's her first husband, <laughs> and that's my first wife. <laughs> and you can see revival in the background uh, in Korean and English. I know that revival uh, is something that God destined us for. I don't have any doubt that we're going to see revival. And Pastora Jenny, last time she was in this building, before the completion, she said, it's coming a lot quicker than you think. And so something is stirring up. I hope you guys uh, uh, are ready. Uh, we are entering into this new chapter of revival. I hope uh, you guys are getting ready for that. And uh, I saw some of that sign in Korea too when we were in Korea. There are many uh, different pastors and churches actually wanted to come under our covering. And so I have to figure that out as well. Um, God is really expanding our ministry and influencing us in different uh, areas. And we ended up meeting somebody, I'm not going to mention the country yet, but this uh, couple, ha they have about a thousand churches in this one nation. And uh, it was so interesting because they wanted, they heard from different people. You know, I don't operate in my prophetic giftings as much in our church because I know a lot of people's uh, lives and uh, I don't want mixture. But when I go out to the nations, people who have traveled with me know that I operate a lot in the prophetic. And then this couple came because in Korea, some people think I'm very prophetic. And so they grab a bunch of people and pastors, they, they know they want me to pray for them. And then, so I met this new couple from a different country. I ended up praying for this couple. 
and the Lord told me about a new strategy of what God wants to use them for. Uh, and I started speaking that and they were in shock because they said, we told this to nobody. We just uh, heard from God uh, just a few months ago. This is something that we are to do for the end time. And uh, so they want us to come to their country, train uh, you know those uh, people, and they have like a thousand churches or slash house of prayer, and God's going to use them in a powerful way in the Muslim world. And so God is like expanding and enlarging our tent, uh, and uh, we'll have a be uh, more detailed report next week. But God is doing something amazing, and it is for revival. It is for revival. You guys are here for revival. God wants to use you f to bring souls into the kingdom of God. Amen. Um, but anyway, going back to today's passage, Solomon, it took Solomon seven years to build a temple. And then he prays a dedication prayer in chapter 6. And then God is pleased with the whole process and answers the prayer with his glory. And glory was so thick, priests could not even enter the house of the Lord. And everyone bowed down and started worshiping, praising the Lord, saying, Truly He is good. His loving kindness is everlasting. The word glory here, as you guys know, is the word kabod, which means weightiness, heaviness. It has to do with showing everyone who God is. It all has to, uh, the glory of God, you know, I know people talk about glory in different way. And when the glory comes, of course, because it is who he is, there's healings and incredible stuff comes. But glory is not just about having fun or manifestations of the spirit, but it is to really show us who he is, how amazing and powerful uh, how weighty he is. Amen? Amen. And it says here that the glory filled the temple when they dedicated the temple. And the word fill in Hebrew is this word malah or malay, which means not only to fill it, but to consecrate it. Set it apart to make it holy. So when Solomon prayed and dedicated the temple, in a sense what happened was God came to that temple and said, I will make this place holy. You have dedicated to me that I receive your dedication. I will set it apart for my name. I will dwell in this place. I will use this place to uh, bring uh, uh, fame to my name. Amen? Amen? And that is our prayer. That is why we want to dedicate this place to the Lord. We want God's fame to be known throughout the world from this, this place. We want God's reputation to be restored in the land, that Jesus is not just a byword that people will speak about, uh, but that they will know that Jesus is God, Amen. that he is the one and only true living God. Amen? Amen? And that's as we dedicate this place, we pray that the glory of God will come again and again and again, fill this place that we will go from glory to glory. And when his glory comes, people fell down and they started worshiping. The, the actual words bowing, worshiping and praising, it all has to do with like shaking of the knees and people falling down on the ground. People wonder why do some people act like crazy drunk people when the Holy Spirit comes. Because they're sensitive and they feel the weightiness of his glory. Think about this. When the spirit fell at Pentecost, right? Everybody around the, the, these 120 people said, what is going on? They must be drunk. Right? You guys remember that story? Yeah. They must be drunk. All right. So people say, well... They're saying that because they're speaking in another language. Does that make sense to you? No. You go to downtown LA, you hear a bunch of people speaking Spanish, Arabic, Korean. They don't say, oh, those guys are drunk. <laughs> they're speaking in different language. No, something greater than speaking in different language actually happened. It's what James Maloney used to call it, the of God. That when the Holy Spirit fell, it made their, their knees shake. And they would wobble and they would fall. And that's what made people think that they were drunk. 
And that's what happens when the glory of God comes. And if you haven't experienced it, it's coming. You're going to fall to the ground. You're going to be one of those people, I will never do that. And you'll be the loudest person on the ground. God loves to make a point. When you say, I will never do that for God. God's like, oh yeah? I'll tell you who's God. But the glory of God is coming. It is here. It's coming. And it's going to cause us to worship him even more. Amen. Amen? Amen. Praise him even more. To bring him more glory. And then his glory comes again. And then we worship him again. And his glory builds in this place where people are going to know and understand the fame of God. How amazing our God is. Amen. And I'm inviting everybody watching online. Uh, if you're here for the first time, if you want to be part of that, just come. Help us build this house for his glory. Full, full of God's glory. And we're starting a second chapter of our church life. And you guys are all the main characters. Amen. Amen. Like, uh, you know, the thing that I love about our team is, okay, we had like seven, eight people go out to Korea. And we're all ministering. You know who the most popular person was? I would like to say me, but it wasn't. It wasn't Pastor Joanne. It, was, it wasn't, well, Leo this time was the second. most. He's usually the most favorite, but he was the second favorite. You won't believe who the favorite person was. It was Uriah. You know why? Because she prayed for everybody until like 1 a.m. And she didn't run out of energy. More people came and she's like pounding on the ground, prophesying, interceding for them, making like groan. There are some big dudes that look kind of scary. And I didn't want to pray for them. <laughs> this tiny little Uriah goes and prays for this guy and he starts weeping like crazy. And that's the beauty of, I think, the DNA that God is establishing in this church. It's not about one person. It's not about a pastor. It's not even about the team. When we come back, most of those people don't even know who prayed for them, who did what. But they do know that Jesus was there, Amen. that God was there. And that's our, our DNA. We love going out in teams like this and having people minister. And uh, when I get tired, I'll just lie down on the ground, pretending that I'm like uh, seeking God or something. But, but I can't afford to do that because I got team members <laughs> who can pray until 1 a.m. Literally we hit the ground uh, we arrived in korea wednesday night had dinner and had to take a train to a uh, southern city called busan we arrived at busan at 1 a.m and we woke up at 8 30 and our ministry started at 9 with a 12-hour prayer and worship <laughs> and every day and night we i don't know we ministered so many hours uh, i think every night we slept at 1 a.m 1.30 a.m., but everybody was so recharged and refreshed because the glory of God was there. Amen? Amen. And uh, so I'm, I'm thankful to the Lord for his faithfulness, everything that he has done, but the glory is coming even more. Amen? Amen. So continue to pray for that. Let's continue to build this house for his glory. Amen?